Okay, my general research interest is developing new methods of X-ray imaging um, that enable us to look inside the body. Um, eventually, I hope some of these methods will be used in human imaging, but here at Spring 8 we look at animals and we use animals to try and investigate diseases that uh, affect humans. And the particular problem we've been working on is, is how to look after very small babies that are born too early. Mm -hmm. And in that case, we don't really know how best to do it. For example, one thing we're looking at at the moment is crying. Actually, we did that yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, why do babies cry? You know, traditionally, People used to make the baby cry at the beginning. So one question is, is that a good idea? Uh -huh. We don't really know. So we're using the research to try and figure out better ways of doing it. Officially in science, um, we are always supposed to start with the problem mm -hmm. and then find the correct tool. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was the complete reverse. Uh, we developed the tool and then went looking for the right problem to use the tool on. Um, and it's been extremely successful. What actually happened was Yagi-san invited me here to take some uh, images. And we did many things. We looked at all kinds of things because we were trying to understand what the, what the beamline was good at. Ah. And the thing that we both recognized very early was that the lungs were fantastic. Um, we could see incredible detail in the lungs. And so I went back to Australia mm. and went to the head of the medical school in my university and asked him if he had somebody doing work on lungs. Ah. Um, I then went to uh, this person, his name is Professor Hooper, and he is a world-renowned uh, physiologist who works on lungs. I showed him the pictures and he went, wow! <laughs> <laughs> and the project began. The thing that makes Spring 8 special is really its size. Um, for this kind of imaging, it's very good to be a long way away from the synchrotron. Oh, okay. And Spring 8 has beam lines that are very long. So these images were taken 200 meters away from the synchrotron. I can maybe give you an, an understanding of why. Um, an X-ray is is basically a shadow, okay. right? And a shadow is good if you have either a small source mm -hmm. or if you have a big one, like the sun, mm -hmm. that is a very long way away. Mm -hmm. right? If you have a big source and 
uh, it's close, you get a very bad shadow. I mean, uh -huh. you put my hand here, you see almost no shadow because the light is too big and the distance is too small. Um, if I were to go a long way from that light and put my hand uh -huh. over the table, you would see a shadow. So it's all to do with blurring. Uh -huh. And so it's good to have a small light a long way away. Then you get these very clear edges. One of, the one of the most important points about this work, though, is that in very small babies, and just after you're born, your mm. lungs have no air. Uh -huh. they, they are full of liquid. So when you're in the uterus, a, a fetus yeah. has liquid-filled lungs. Mm. And when they're born, they become air-filled. And using Spring 8, we can see what happens. Yeah. We can see the liquid leave. And the, and the air arrive. And the air gives these, these bright spots. So white on here is, is, is air. Um, much of, because of these images, we have learned new things about the way the lung operates very early in life. Mm -hmm. And that has already changed the way doctors oper you know, ventilate babies that are premature. Well, a, a, a lot is possible if you bring together people who don't normally work together. Ah, yeah. So, you know, doctors don't normally know anything about a synchrotron. Right? It's a completely different field. Yeah. People who work in biology don't normally know anything about physics. And physics people don't know anything about biology. So if you put them together, mm -hmm. there is a lot of opportunity to do new things. Mm -hmm. So the physics allows us to look at the biology. Yeah. Much of the information that we have gained from the images was in some ways already known by people like Professor Hooper. Mm -hmm. But it was very difficult for exactly the reason you describe, um, that the data was complicated. Mm -hmm. It was in, it was a graph or a table yeah. or just yeah. numbers. Um, and it's very difficult to use that to convince doctors that they should do something different. Mm -hmm. What we get very often is when we show the images and the movies mm -hmm. of this, is people go, ah, I see. And it's really true. I see means I understand. Ah. Right? And uh, this doesn't happen with any other kind of uh, data, I think. Other data, you have, you're exactly right. You have to think a lot. Here you don't think, you see. It's almost impossible to do that on humans. It's, you, you cannot experiment with a completely new idea on a new baby. Um, it's not ethical. So we use animals to try and learn new stuff. And when we've learned that, then we communicate that to the doctors. So in fact, a big success of our project is that information that we have discovered is now used to train doctors.